La Blaugrana 4 4-0 Barcelona beat Real Madrid in El Clasico That That is a masterclass I, I just want to talk about one person Only one person in this video okay, I'm going to talk about many people Because all of them are under him Hansi Flick Guys Hansi Flick is doing a I don't I can't, I can't even explain it. There's 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 elements to how he plays that just reminds me of uh Unai, right? Where you think he has a big weakness with this high line. You think you can exploit them every single time. Every team has tried to do it. Bayern tried. Uh Osasuna tried. Uh had three offside goals. This one had two offside goals. In fact, Barcelona might have, might have broken the record in this game <laughs> or this season for most offside goals for the opponent. They have this high line you think is a big weakness for them, but it's actually their strength. It's actually their strength because you're scoring offside goals that they're not counting. But at the same time, you're never getting into your rhythm because they're putting you in a position where you're not comfortable. They're making you have to kick long balls. And they're just squeezing. They're just squeezing. They're pressing high and squeezing with the high line. And I'm just like, it's so brave. It is actually so brave, but it's so effective. Like, why is it working so well with these managers? When you think you have them cornered, it's it's insane. The only difference between okay, not the only, but the one major difference between Aston Villa and Barcelona is that Barca have amazing wingers, right? Or oh, and a crazy midfield. Because you're not know, going to compare McGinn, um, Ramsey, and Morgan Rogers to Famin Lopez and all these guys. But then you have Rafinha and Yamin Yamal, Lamin Yamal on either wing for. Aston Villa, they play more for 4-2 with Rodgers up front. And sometimes McGinn goes and plays out on the wing just to cover. So they're not as potent moving forward or going forward. But you can see you can see the elements of the game that are similar between the two of them. Hansi Flick is coaching this team to a different level. Lewandowski, when you talk about Lewandowski, obviously he was voted man of the match. He scored two goals. But for me, the thing that, I, that really caught my eye was the fact that in every single corner, he's defending as the middle man. Normally, in most teams, you see that the striker is the one who's put at the near post. You give him the easy job. Be at the near post. When the ball comes in, you just hit it. You're not, he's not, his job is not to mark anyone. But for him to be playing as literally he's like the quarterback in the middle of the, in the, middle of the, of the D, which is something you normally give one of your center backs, right? But because they are coached so well into defending in a zone, Lewandowski's job is very simple. Bro, you have a zone. And then anyone outside him marks the runners. So it's like the people are outside. So if they're defending a corner, this is the corner. Uh, this is the post. You have the four or five defenders defending zones and then everyone else is doing man. So you're coming, coming with runners. But if the ball comes to my area, I'm heading it out. Because I saw him giving instructions when he was there and I was like, hey, how is this guy just giving instructions from, uh, from the back? So... Yo, 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 Lewandowski, Lewandowski. But you also had one of the worst misses you'll ever see in your life. Like, how do you hit the post from there? You scored the hardest one. His first goal was amazing. Like, the fact that he just got, like, peeled off the shoulder and then receives the ball and then the temerity, the unmitigated goal, eh? <laughs> the audacity to take it from there and actually put it in the corner was insane. Like, that That was really good. Then the second goal, again, just being smart. Militao, Rudika, you cannot leave one of the most lethal strikers in that area by himself. Like, the guy was just alone. Ball comes in, he just headers in, in into the far corner. Same corner, he scored the first goal. In fact, uh, Lunin is going to be having nightmares because I don't think he had... He didn't have a bad game, but also he didn't have a great game. He was just there. Many people, even the comment section, were saying that he should have saved that first uh, uh, goal. But the way Lewa had taken it early and then the way he placed it, 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 was, it, was, great. it was a tough one. Um, Casado, I thought would have gotten a yellow card. And even when Frankie came on in the second half, I was like, I, I thought Frankie was coming on for him. But Frankie came on for Femin Lopez, which was a bit of a surprise to me. But it really changed a lot because Casado now didn't have to go back and be the last man and try and defend uh, deep, which also kind of prevented him from not getting that second yellow card. But also, Hansi Flick really trusts him and wants him to keep playing. He brings, there's something he brings to this team. I've, I've, I'll go and watch the game again and actually just study him because there's moments in the game you never see him, but he's never subbed off, which means there's something he's doing right. If, if a coach doesn't take someone like that off that you never see that much, there's something he's doing right. It could either be in the pressing or, you know, something like that. Baldi's cross for Lewandowski's second goal was dope, dope. 
then Lamin Yamal, star boy. I know, I know, I know I'm a soccer fan, and soccer is a star boy, but yo, this is this is Shane Bread like a damn one. This one is now star star, uh, like doing it at the biggest stage. He had never beaten Barcelona, he had never beaten Real Madrid, and this was his first win against Real. He was very poor. His decision making was quite poor in the towards the end of the first half and the beginning of the second half, there was one chance where he had, and everyone in the comment section during the live was just like, Yo, why are you so selfish in that moment? But yeah, the boy, that that finish was good. And I mentioned it in, in the live. There's this thing about, I don't know is it, it's, if it's coaches not coaching defenders well, but being beaten, many defenders now, if you're left footed on the right wing, you're always expecting the, the, left, the right winger to cut back to his left foot and try and kick it in the club like, curl it into the corner. But if they can go with both legs, it's like defenders can't, just can't. Like, they just really struggle. So if you look at world football, any defender that can use both feet is more or less in the upper echelons of world football because many defenders, it's like defending one-on-one -on -one is, I, I, to me, I feel like it's a lost art. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, lastly, uh, Rafinha keeps bowling. Assist goal, like, the boy is on fire. The boy is on fire. Real Madrid were just the offside team. Like, it was just offsides. This game, I feel like Ancelotti just was not it. It was not it. This was not it. This was not Ancelotti's game to show, like, yo, this is me. But this game, this result has also... The Dortmund game, really... I asked a question during our podcast. Was the comeback win, was it ma just masking the things that are happening? Because we all know Real are really struggling in trying to make this work. They're struggling in trying to play uh, Mbappe and Vini all together. When Rodri is there, it's a different story. But trying to fit them in, they're always running towards the left like because that's how they've played their whole lives, right? They're always running towards the left. So it's, it's, it's a tough one. Um, yeah, that's the question I asked. Like, is it them masking or is this comeback the beginning of something new? And Keenan said it was the beginning of something because it is just masking. So I think now you can see that I think it's very clear that it was just masking what was um, happening, right? Because, man, this team, this team has issues. This team has a lot of issues. I know they can figure it out. They are Real Madrid. They can figure it out easily. They have a good coach. There's so much belief in that team because they've been winning things. So they will definitely figure it out. But Barcelona did well, did well to keep their record intact because had Real drawn or won this game, they would have gotten 40. They've gone, they'd have gone to 40 unbeaten games, which was the record that Barca set, and they would, have, they would have tied it. So the fact that they stopped that at 39, they keep their 40, and had, they, had Real drawn or won this one, definitely they were going to get 41 in the next game. So... This was yeah, yeah. This 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 was the, a massive, massive win for Barcelona. We will talk about it more on Fantasy Football Focus. Shout out to everyone who gave predictions. This is everyone who gave predictions because we were live on TikTok and IG and YouTube. Fogging football had said three one Barcelona. Edu had said uh, Barcelona Kichu. I didn't give a score line. Gal Rebel three two. B Real bad character three two. Barcelona. Weru, 3-1, Barcelona. Roro Roro, 3-1, Barcelona. Ochin Austin, Ochino Austin, 2-1, Barcelona. King, 2-0, Real. Edum Fantastic, 4-1, Barca. Nyash, 3-2, Real. Rain, 3-0, Barcelona. Alpha K, 2-0, Barcelona. Uh, Fel Fela is me, 2-2. Vibe, Ryan, 4-2, Real. And then Ray said 4-3, Real Madrid. And then Wayne just said that Yamal will get a hat-trick of assists. But... Shout out to all those guys because all those guys were the live. These were their predictions just before the game. So shout out to all of you guys. Thank you so much. This was insane. Ah, that was our HMD watch along. And yeah, let's meet tomorrow. Liverpool versus Arsenal.